Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Thursday his country has intelligence information that 10,000 troops from North Korea are being prepared to join Russian forces fighting against his country. Zelensky did not go into detail about the claim that came a day after U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell said that Washington and its allies are alarmed by North Korea's military support for Russia's war in Ukraine but couldn't confirm Ukrainian claims that soldiers were sent to fight for Moscow. From our intelligence we've got information that North Korea sent tactical personnel and officers to Ukraine, Zelensky told reporters at a press conference with NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta. They are preparing on their land 10,000 soldiers, but they didn't move them already to Ukraine or to Russia, he added. The Ukrainian leader's comments raised the stakes for his Western allies as he met in Brussels with European Union leaders and then NATO defense ministers to discuss his victory plan to end the country's devastating war with Russia. Ukraine, uh, Ukraine truly deserves to become the so they thought NATO member one day, and we must do everything to ensure this happens. That is why the first fundamental point in the victory plan is the invitation to NATO. Ukrainians have shown that we can defend shared values, and we are standing against Russia. The biggest threat to Europe and global peace. In our revolutions, we've proven that we truly value democracy. We have limited time for questions, I'm afraid, so I will do my best to take as many as we can. I'll start with the BBC and the first one. Strengthening of Ukraine, it's not only depending on the weapon, this kind or that kind, it's depending on the will. If, if our partners will not lose their unity we will not lose these will, strengths and we will not use that uh, we'll be, we will not lose that unity it's you so can important. count on that and my message today to vladimir vladimirovich putin is that if he thinks we will we will not and today again is evidence look what australians have done what the germans are doing what the us has done today uh, again uh, announcing uh, almost half a billion in uh, anti-missile defense package. systems General, uh, you mentioned that, and that has been mentioned before, that China is a decisive. Because Putin will never stop. Just, just if we will not stop him, he will never stop. It's he likes the process. He's fan of the war. I gave today the example, very interesting example, when we tried to save our north part and went through their border on Kursk region. You know what the people said to our soldiers? You are NATO. You are Americans. Russian people said to our soldiers. Our soldiers, Ukrainian speaking guys, but of course they know Russian language 100%. They begin to answer in Russian language. No, they said in Russian, no, no, no. We're Ukrainians. They said, that, and Russians, these old people, they said, no, no, you are NATO, we know, you are NATO. They've been very surprised that we are Ukrainians. So you understand in what disinformation they live. So Putin built such government, he took the rights of his people, and now he's moving to the death, young people. That means that he will never stop. He likes this world, and he will protect his world. That's why we have to finish, and the, no, not finish, yes, yes, better to finish with him, yes, it's really, but to stop him, I'm, I'm, I mean, to stop him, understand? Uh, uh, supporting Russia, and now North Korea uh, 
trying to send personnel to fight your From our intelligence, we've got information that North Korea sent technical personnel and officers to Ukraine on temporary occupied territories. And they are preparing on their land 10,000 soldiers, but they didn't move them already to Ukraine or to, to Russia. So we, when we will have this information, of course, we will raise up this question, but because this will be the second I think it's already the second country which uh, involved to this war against us. Thank you. European Union leaders arrived at a summit in Brussels Thursday to seek ways to make the bloc a more hostile destination for migrants and asylum seekers following a recent surge in support for the extreme right. As the summit opened, the 27 EU leaders prepared to look at plans to speed up initiatives to get unwanted migrants out of the bloc and process asylum applications far outside their borders. The tenor of the debate is a far cry from 2015, less than a decade ago, when the EU was faced with a migration crisis. Well over a million migrants and refugees sought help then, mainly from the Middle East and Afghanistan. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the EU's dominant national leader at the time, famously said, we can manage that. Now, EU leaders want to manage and seal off their borders ever more tightly, embracing initiatives that would have looked unacceptable only a few years ago. In recent weeks, Poland has said it wants to temporarily suspend the right to asylum, Italy has opened two centers to process asylum seekers outside its borders in Albania and Germany has reinstated border controls, all of them measures going in the same direction. With the extreme right surging in the EU parliamentary elections in June and in other polls in Germany and Austria since, migration remains a trigger button for leaders. On Wednesday, an Italian Navy ship docked at the Albanian port of Shingjin to bring the first group of 16 migrants intercepted in international waters for processing there. Under a five-year deal signed last November by Italian Premier Giorgia Maloney and her Albanian counterpart, Eddie Rama, up to 3,000 migrants picked up by the Italian Coast Guard in international waters each month will be sheltered in Albania. They will be screened initially on board the ships that rescue them before being sent to Albania for further assessment.